Adam Lerner, and today I want to talk to you guys about exporting photos from Lightroom 5. Now, this is not remarkably different than exporting photos in Lightroom 4, but since we are now working in Lightroom 5, I want to talk to you about how to export your photos and to create export presets, which is really cool because a lot of you guys are probably exporting photos on a regular basis for things like posting to Flickr or to Facebook or 500 pixels or to your portfolio or different things where you want to not only export your images to maintain a certain size and dimension, let's say, you also want to put it in a particular folder to keep it organized because when you want to post those images, you want to be able to quickly and easily retrieve them from the same place on your hard drive. You don't want to have a bunch of duplicate copies. You don't want to be searching all over the place, etc., etc. Okay, so let's start with this. Here it is. I've got this small set of images these are street shots that I shot when I was in Cuba recently. They were shot with my Fuji X100S. And uh, I want to, let's say, export some of these to use for social media purposes. Okay. So what that means is that I'm going to export these in a size and a dimension and a quality that would be, let's say, appropriate for posting to things like Flickr and Facebook and, and maybe even uploading to Instagram or anything like that. Okay, so very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image right here and I'm going to go to my menu up here. Now, I can go to File Export, okay, and I can just do that and that'll bring me to the Export dialog. But I love keyboard shortcuts and if you see right here, there's a Shift Command and E. This is the Mac. Now, it's a little bit different for the PC, but we are on a Mac, so that's what we're going to be talking about here. And I typically wouldn't go up to the file menu with the mouse. I would avoid that step and I would just go Shift, Command, and E, boom. And it would take me up to the export dialog box. Now, export one file. Reason being, I am only selecting one file over here. Okay, so. Um, what I want to do here is I want to go through all the different menus that are over here and I want to talk to you guys about the different um, images, that, I'm sorry, the different parameters that we have in here. And I'm going to get rid of some of these old plugins because they're just kind of sitting there and not doing us any good. Okay, so let's go back to where we started right here. So let's go through all the different parameters here. I'll talk about why I'm making these choices and then we'll even create a preset that we can use for future exports. I'm even going to close this so it doesn't influence our thinking. All right, so the very first thing we see here is export to. Now we've got all these different kinds of options over here, but the big three are email, hard drive, and, and CD or DVD. We're going to start by e going export to hard drive. So that means it's going to go to our computer's hard drive. Now where it says export to specific folder, okay, obviously it's choosing the last folder that I was exporting to, but I want to specify a new folder for this particular task, okay? So I'm going to say choose. And on the hard drive that I'm on right now, um, give me a moment, I'm going to select 2013 Lightroom Exports, okay? And I've already created a folder called Cuba Street, all right? So I'm gonna say choose, and that's where I'm gonna export. So, so basically on this volume called Extra Storage in a folder called 2013 Lightroom Exports in a subfolder called Cuba Street, okay? Now, that's very cool. I could even put this in another subfolder and I could just say, let's say this subfolder is going to be called social. And what that means is that these are going to be for social media. All right. Now, with the existing files, ask what to do. Um, I've already done all of that. So I'm going to go to file naming. Now, I can rename these files, which which is really interesting because right now the, the file has basically just the Fuji filing name and .jpg. So I'm gonna to go to rename file and I'm gonna to go to edit over here, okay? And we can add some custom text. I don't really care about the sequence so much, um, but I want to insert the file name. And let's see, we're gonna put a little dash there. Um, I'd like to insert the date. We'll put a little dash there. And, um, and that's it. So it's gonna be custom text, file name, and date. And we'll just say done, all right? So the, the image is going to be, and let's just call this Cuba Street. And I'm just going to do an underscore. Okay, so this is going to be Cuba Street 
Cuba underscore screed dash the actual Fuji file name dash the year 2013. Okay. And let's go down. We're not doing video. We're going to go down to file settings. Okay. So right now I want to, I want to export this as a JPEG. So what that means is that even though the raw file is in my hard drive, I've manipulated that file. I've applied all different kinds of, um, uh, editing to that file so I'm going to export it as a JPEG that's going to retain all of that and it's also going to reduce the file size now when it comes to quality over here that's going to determine how big that file is how much information is in that file okay so as we reduce this the quality of the image that means there's going to be it's going to be a smaller a lighter JPEG that means there's going to be less information in there what that means is that it's going to be a smaller file which is going to be easier to let's say load on a web page or put on social media because it's not going to be this huge full resolution file if I was going to print this JPEG I would do hundred percent I wouldn't resize it but since we're going to be putting it up on social media I'm going to reduce the quality down to 70% which will greatly reduce the file size okay now I'm also going to resize to fit this image so what that means is that I'm going to make this a thousand pixels at the longest edge there's all different kinds of things let's say you wanted a very specific dimension on here for width and height um, or you want to enter those dimensions or you had very specific megapixels the number that you wanted you can enter all that but for this case I'm going to say that the longest edge of my image okay as a horizontal is going to be a thousand pixels if it were vertical the longest edge would be a thousand pixels tall resolution is going to be 72 pix pixels per inch because most of our monitors we really don't see much more than 72 uh, pixels uh, I know that there are people out there that are going to argue against that and say oh some monitors have higher resolution blah 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 this is really just for the general public because most of us at 72 that's fine now output sharpening I don't really want to add any more sharpening um, I've already sharpened my image. I'm not suggesting you can't add sharpening here, but I don't feel like I need to add more sharpening. So I'm going to unclick that. Okay, as far as metadata goes, I want to add all the metadata. Um, I don't even care about removing the um, location information because I want to be able to share all the information that's embedded in that file. And the metadata is going to be everything from my information, copyright information, location, camera, lens, shutter speed, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be all in there. Okay. If I wanted to limit that information, I have options to do so up here. But in this case, I'm going to keep all the metadata in there. Then we get on to watermarking. I don't want to add a watermark. I don't really believe in watermarks. I've talked about them. I find that watermarks are incredibly distracting. Again, this is a personal preference. If you guys are into watermarking, that's your thing. I really don't care for them. Um, so I'm not adding a watermark. Then after processing, I want the image to, to basically show in the finder. Now you have an option for to do nothing. So that means it'll just it'll just take the image put it in that folder nothing happens I want to go to that folder after it's done because then I want to be able to utilize that image um, there are other options in here like for example you can set other uh, applications so that what that means is that when that image exports it exports and another application will open so if you were going to then do further editing in another application you could streamline that workflow in this case I just want to go and um, I want to basically have it showed to me in the finder. All right, so now that I've got all of these settings in here, okay, so I've already got a specific folder in mind. I've got a subfolder called social. I've got custom settings in there as far as naming conventions. I've got a specific sizing thing that I want to do here as far as keeping the quality and the longest edge of the image. I've got the particular metadata that I want to put in there, okay? Now that I've got all this together, I've taken a lot of time to create all those parameters, so why not add that as a preset if that's something I'm going to be doing often? So I can just hit add over here, and I can just basically just call this Cuba Street Social. And what that means is that these are my Cuba Street shots that I'm going to be using for social media. And it's and this particular preset is going to appear in my user presets folder. Boom. And there it is. Cuba Street Social. Okay. So now that I've got that, all I have to do is select that and hit export. And there it comes right up. Cuba Street. It's got the actual... Um, file name the date and there it is we'll open that up double click on it opens in preview and we've got a 1000 pixel at the longest edge image in there that I can then go and upload and treat and uh, 
upload and put it on any kind of social media. So that's basically it right there. Now, if we wanted to, to do something a little bit differently, just to confuse things a little bit, let me go back to Lightroom. And uh, let's say I wanted to export this as a full resolution image for printing, okay? So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go Shift, Command and E, okay? And I'm going to choose a different folder here, okay? I'm sorry, I'm gonna put in a different subfolder and I'm gonna call this print because my last one was called social, okay? I'm gonna keep all this, this custom settings the same as far as the naming goes. I'm gonna go full resolution as far as my JPEG and I'm not gonna resize the image, okay? I'm also gonna remove the metadata because I don't really need to add all, embed all that information in there if all I'm gonna do is send it to the printer. I'm sure that's debatable. In this case, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna add this and I'm gonna call this Cuba underscore social. Um, if I can print, print, if I can spell. And I'm gonna call this print, okay? And what that means is that this is going to be in a new sub subfolder um, for printing and I just um, let me just rename that because I didn't spell it correctly print okay boom um, and I'm going to export this all right now as you can see I've got a 9.2 megabyte full file in my print folder and I've got a 279k in my social media folder look at that that's my 279k social and here is my full resolution JPEG for printing. All right, you guys can see the big difference over here. And it's very easy, okay? It's very easy to organize these. If we go into the master hierarchy here, okay, in my Cuba Street um, folder, there's two folders underneath, one called print, one called social. Social has the little 279K file. Print has the huge, um, the huge file in there. And that is really basically it, the nine, the nine meg file. Um, sorry about all that craziness right there. So that's basically it, guys. So again, remember, Shift Command E that takes you up to the print dialog. You can create as many of these user presets. You can create individual folders. So I could create a folder in here, and I could even just call it like Cuba. And under there, I could have social print whatever I decide to do. But that way, I have a preset that's pre-made so that I know that I can apply all those settings that I took the time to make so that every time I export them, all those settings will be applied and it will go into the right location. That's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click the subscribe button that's located just beneath the video right here. Once you've done that, click on manage subscriptions and then check off whether you want to be emailed when I upload a new video or if you want those videos to show up in your newsfeed.